Hello dear my schoolers, this is my school channel where we are tackling the Jam CBT past question for the subject chemistry and the year 2020. Don't forget my name is Abiola, don't go anywhere, stay with us, we will be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and in this clip we'll be solving questions 1 to 20. We are working right on question 1. The electronic configuration of an element is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p3. How many unpaired electrons are there in the element? Okay, so this is just all you have to do. You have to just recall that the s orbital can only be filled up with two electrons maximum okay the p orbitals can contain six electrons and the d orbitals of course can hold up to 10 electrons so let me just show you how to fetch this out so we have the configuration 1s2 2s2 okay 2p6 3s2 okay and 3p so at first uh, we may need to determine not really necessary but it's good we determine what element is this so 2 plus 2 that is 4 plus 6 that is 10 12 15 so what element has the atomic number six, uh, 15 rather that element is phosphorus so the question requires what the number of unpaired electrons are available okay so uh, when we are filling up these orbitals i just i'm going to skip and i'm going to go to the um, last shell so we have okay we have for the p all right so we have three electrons here all right so look at this can you see so you can see that in the last um, p orbitals you can see that we have just three electrons so you have to fill each one first then you will now start okay from the first one you fill it you fill it you fill it so we can see from here that this element has three unpaired electrons okay so imagine if i have six here yeah, or if i have five here yeah, okay so that will make element um, chlorine Okay, so if we are filling the p orbitals for chlorine, that's 17. This is what we are going to do. Already we filled 3, 1, 2, 3. We are still left with 2. We fill like this. You can see. So if you are asked, how many unpaired electrons can you find here? It's just 1. Okay, so we are going back to phosphorus, which is, it has 3 unpaired electrons, okay, on the p orbital. So the correct option is 3. So let's go back to the screen and select which option carries the number 3. Look through all of this, you will see that option C carries three. So option C is the correct option. Question two, which of the following can be obtained by fractional distillation? When you look at fractional distillation, there must be enough difference of um, boiling points. Okay, boiling point differences must be good enough, at least 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so looking through all of these options, the correct option is option A when you want to distill nitrogen from liquid air. So you use fractional distillation to get or to obtain nitrogen from liquid air. When you come to option B, sodium chloride from salt water, that is by evaporation. This is your normal salt, your common salt that you use in cooking. Iodine from iodine in carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so this is because these are two non-polar okay solutions or non-polar um, chemical compounds okay so that's it sulfur from solution of sulfur in carbon disulfide this is another uh, separation technique entirely so going back to the question given us which of the following can be obtained by fractional distillation that is nitrogen from liquid air option a is very correct question three 
Duralumin consists of aluminium, copper, and what? Okay, duralumin has very high content of aluminium, okay, about 90% or over, yes, over 90%. Then we have copper, then we have manganese and magnesium. So the correct option is option D, manganese and magnesium. So if you fix it back to the question, duralumin consists of aluminium, copper, manganese, and magnesium. So option D is very correct. Question four. An example of a polysaccharide is what? So at first you should identify that a polysaccharide means combination of several, yes, several monosaccharides. Okay, so um, dextrose is like um, a, a D form of glucose, okay, very related, very closely related to um, glucose. Same thing with um, mannose as well. It's also a sugar monomer of the series of the hydroexos um, series or the hydroexos group, okay. So the only polysaccharide we have here is the giant uh, molecule of starch containing several monosaccharides. So the correct option here is option D for starch. Question 5. 8 gram of CH4 okay, occupies 11.2 at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So this, uh, this, is, this gas is methane, okay, uh, belongs to the arcane family. 8 gram of it occupies 11.2. So normally you should know that um, this is 16 grams normally. So we have half of it. So 16 grams should occupy 22.4. So half of that 16 is this 8 gram that occupies half of that 22.4, which is 11.2. Okay, so what volume would 22 gram of this, okay, occupy under the same condition? So we have to identify what homologous series this belongs to. So we have C23, so that is prop. Okay, so is it arcane? Is it arcane? Is it arcane? Is it arcane? So we have to find that we have H3, this is 3 plus 2, we have 5 plus 3, that is 8. So C3, H8, that gives you propane. Okay, so the, we are now asked what volume would 22 gram of propane occupy under the same condition? So let's just go to the whiteboard and bring our solution to this question. So we can see that 22 gram of Propane C3H8 okay, occupies what? That's what we don't know. Okay, so normally let's see what is the molar volume of this gas that we have here. We have three atoms of carbon, and we know carbon is 12, that is 12 times 3. Okay, plus we have eight atoms of hydrogen. That is 1 times 8. Okay, 12 times 3, that makes 36 plus 8. Okay, and that gives us 44 gram. So, we should see that normally 44 gram, okay, of methane occupies 22.4. So, we are now asked what will 22 gram of that same propane rather occupy? Okay, so you can see this is 44. 44 divided by 2 gives you 22. So definitely the molar volume will be divided by 2. So that is 22.4 divided by 2. That gives you 11.2. So let's go back to the screen and select the correct option. So look through all of these options provided and you will see that option B, 11.2 dm cube is the correct option. Don't forget that the link in the description below is made available so that you can get any of the my school tools to help you better prepare for your coming exams. Okay, so why not use the link, click on it, it takes you to the my school website where you have enough information on how you can get the my school mobile app for your Android devices or the my school software for your laptops and computers so right now we are tackling question six the bus treatment for a student who accidentally poured conk or concentrated tetraodosulfate six on his skin in the laboratory is to wash his skin with what okay so this particular question has a um, lot of answers okay it has um uh, a lot of contributions towards it. I think the safest to recommend is that 
such a um, student should wash his skin that particular spot okay with cool running water not cold water with cool running water so we we'll recommend option a as the most viable option we believe you are enjoying this content and it's helping you learn better about your subject please do not forget that you have to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as soon as we upload the next video just for you question seven which of the gas laws does this graph illustrate okay so just take a cue we have volume against temperature so let's use the definitions for each of these gas laws okay so we have the first one boys law Boyce's law says, states that the volume of a given mass of gas okay, is inversely proportional to the pressure, volume against pressure, okay, provided that temperature remains constant. So Boyce's law deals volume against pressure. Let's go to Charles law. Charles law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, provided that pressure remains constant. So the correct answer is Charles law. Let's go to Gelusak's law. Gelusak's law of combining volumes states that when gases react, they do so in volumes, in simple ratios to one another. And to the volume of their product, if gaseous, provided that temperature and pressure remains constant. You can see that definition. We have Graham's law of diffusion state that at constant temperature and pressure, okay, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. So it's completely out of what we are looking at. So we are looking at volume against temperature in Kelvin. So the correct option is option B for Charles law. Question 8. What are the possible oxidation numbers of an element if its atomic number is 17? So you just have to determine that an element with atomic number 17, that is chlorine. How do I know? Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. Oh, let me count. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. That's number 10. Neon. Then we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur 16 chlorine okay argon potassium and calcium so we see that chlorine is number 17 so we are talking about the element 17 so the possible oxidation number of chlorine we know the valency is minus one so the possible oxidation number of the element chlorine is minus one and seven minus one because it gains an electron okay it needs an electron to complete or to obey the, um, the stability rule, the octet rule. So, option A is the correct option. Minus 1 and 7, they are the possible oxidation number of the atomic number 17 for the element chlorine. So, option A is very correct. Number 9, what process would coal undergo to give coal gas, coal tar, ammoniacal liquor, and coke okay this coke is not the regular soft drinks that you take this is a mineral okay so uh, the process that will give you all of this is from the destructive distillation okay so the correct option is option b talking about liquefaction that is when okay um gas moves from that phase into the liquid phase like from vapor to liquid okay so hydrolysis is you adding water to break down with polymer into monomer okay so the correct option here is option b then we have steam distillation that is not correct for this so the correct option here is option b destructive distillation of coal gives you coal gas coal ammoniacal liquor and coke so option b is very correct question 10 liquid black soap is made by boiling palm oil with liquid extract of ash okay the function of the hash is to provide the what okay so this liquid extract of ash can be referred to as lye okay this lye is a metal hydroxide okay that of course provides the alkaline solution for the preparation or for the making of soap so the correct option is option c alkali so option c is very very correct question 11 when water when water drops are added to calcium carbide in a container and the gas produced is past rigid and lighted. OK, 
Okay, the resultant flame is called an watt. Okay, at first, when you had water to calcium carbide, what you are going to get is acetylene, okay, and calcium hydroxide. This process was discovered by Frederick Ola in the 19th century. So the the, the product you should get or the resultant flame is called oxyacetylene flame from the product when you react water to calcium carbide. The acetylene, okay, becomes oxy acetylene flame. So option C is the correct option. Number 12, which of the following substances is a mixture? So remember mixtures um, contains two or more constituents and they can be physically separated. Why compounds, okay, con contains constituents that are chemically combined together? So granulated sugar is a compound. Sodium chloride, that is your normal common, common salt, your table salt, ion filling. So, um, the only mixture that we have here is seawater, okay? Combination of a mixture of sodium chloride and water. So option B is the correct option. 13. If the quantity of oxygen occupying 2.76 liters container at a pressure of 0.825 atmospheric pressure ATM and 300 Kelvin, that is K, is reduced by one half. Okay, so what is the pressure exerted by the remaining gas? So you can see that the values given to us involve volume and pressure. The temperature here is remains the same. So we are going to use Boyce's law, okay, volume of a fixed mass of gas or a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure provided that temperature remains the same or constant. So we'll use Boyce's law. The formula P1V1 equals to P2V2. Okay, very well. We can see that the volume we are told is reduced by one half. So volume one is given as 2.76. And we are told that it is reduced by one half. So V2 will be this divided by 2. Okay, and that is 1.38. We are given the pressure as 0.825. The first pressure is 0.825. So the question requires that we find pressure 2. P2, okay, what is the pressure exerted by the remaining gas? So we slot in these values into the given formula and we find our answer. So we have... P1, which is 0.825. Remember, we are asked to find P2. So P2 will be equals to P1 V1 over okay, V2. So we we'll have P1 is as 0.825. Multiplies the volume. Okay, we have the first the V1 as 2.76. All right, divided by the second volume, which is 1.38. So, if we multiply this and we divide it by what we have in the denominator, the answer we are going to get is 1.650. Okay, so that's our answer. Let's just go back to the screen and select the right option. If you glance through all of the options provided, you can find our answer in option A. So option A is correct, 1.650 ATM. So we're solving question 14. Four elements, P, Q, R, and S, okay? They have atomic numbers of 4, 10, 12, and 14, respectively. Which of, this, which of these elements is noble gas? So when you talk about noble gases, they are non-reactive or they have low reactivity, okay? So you can also refer to them as rare gases or inert gases, okay? So let's first identify these elements using the atomic number. So we have P, Q, R, and S, okay? Okay, very well. So we have um, 4, 10, 12, and 14. 4, 10, 12, and 14. So let's start up. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. So this is beryllium, atomic number 4. Boron, carbon, or beryllium, right? Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. We have neon. Then sodium, neon, sodium, 
magnesium aluminium oh sorry neon sodium magnesium so magnesium is number 12 magnesium aluminium magnesium number 12 aluminium number 13 okay neon sodium magnesium aluminium all right so then we have <coughs> excuse me then we have silicon all right neon sodium aluminium silicon this is silicon then phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon potassium and calcium so looking at all of this we if you have to arrange the noble gases okay according to their densities we are going to start with we're going to start with helium okay helium we have neon this is helium neon then we have argon all right we have krypton we have xenon then we can also add to the list radon okay these are our examples of noble gases on the periodic table so if we look through all of these options um, or this information provided we will see that the correct answer is the element neon with atomic number 10 so that is element q it belongs to the noble gases so q is the correct answer so let's go back to the screen and select the correct option so which of these elements is noble gases is noble gas that is option b for element q which is identified as neon neon is the correct answer option b number 15 the products of the thermal decomposition of ammonium trials and nitrate 5 are what okay they are actually nitrogen one oxide and water it is an exothermic reaction so looking at all of this the correct option is option a okay the product of thermal decomposition of ammonium trials and nitrate 5 they include nitrogen one oxide that is n2o and water so option a is the correct option for us, my scholars, we know that we have one or two questions we like to ask. Why not use the link in the description below? It takes you to the My School website where our Army of Solution providers are waiting to give you the answers that you need so that you can gain clarity and better understanding of concepts that you are trying to look into. So, right now we are solving question 16. How many valence electrons are contained in the elements? Okay, we have P. 31 and 15 okay so atomic number this is the atomic number this is the atomic mass okay so we know that this is this element is phosphorus and we should also remember that phosphorus has valency of three or five so the correct option here that is made available to us is option a for three so option a is very correct in case you have better steps or explanations to any of the questions you have tackled so far, would like to know, all you just have to do for us is to use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the steps you would like to share. Question 17. The number of molecules of carbon four oxide produced when 10.0 gram of calcium trouser carbonate is treated with 0.2 dm cube of one mole of ACL in the equation is what? okay so like i would like to share this particular question has very good approaches that we can use there are different methods to it but i'm going to present something as short and as workable as possible so we can see from the reactant side two moles of hcl okay producing one mole of carbon four oxide if you check the mole okay the molecule number of molecules on the product side okay so we are told that is 0.2 of HCl okay so we cross multiply so we have x times 2 equals 0 0.2 times 1 dividing both sides by 2 okay what we are going to have is 0 0.1 so recall the Avogadro's constant that is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 so by the time you multiply this by this what you should have is 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 22 so this is your final answer so remember like i said there are different techniques to solve this question i'm just presenting something very workable for us so we have option c is correct 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 22 question 18 
the volume occupied by 1.58 gram of a gas at STP is 500 cm cube. Okay, what is the relative molecular mass of the gas of that particular gas? We know at STP we have 22.4 dm cube. Converting the dm cube to cm cube, you are going to have 22.4 times 1000, and that gives you 22,400 cm cube. So we know that at let's go to the board. We are going to see that at um, 500 cm cube of this particular gas, it weighs 1.58. Therefore, 2400 cm cube will weigh what? So that is what we are looking for. By the time we cross multiply, we would have x times 500, okay, equals 2400 times 1.58. Dividing both sides by 500, which is the coefficient of x at the left hand side. Okay, so by the time we divide through 2 to 4 times 1.58 divided by 5, what we should have is roughly 71. So we can see that 2400 weighs 71 grams. So let's go back to the screen and select the correct option. Look through all of this and we see that option D, 71, carries the correct answer. Option D is correct. Number 19, uh, which of the following gases will rekindle a brightly splint? Okay, so the gas is nitrogen 1 oxide, option C. Another gas that behaves uh, very similar to this is oxygen. But you can use different uh, experiments or processes to distinguish between oxygen and nitrogen 1 oxide. That is, you can even take an instance of their smell. Okay, oxygen is um, it's odorless. So from the smell of this, it has a pleasant smell. So the correct option is option C, okay, nitrogen 1 oxide. Number 20, uh, the shape of ammonia molecule is what? It actually, it has um, a pyramid shape, okay, so we can say it is trigonal planar. So the correct option here is option A. The shape of ammonia molecule is trigonal planar. So option A is very correct. We've come to the end of this segment, but there are more video clips to come. All you just have to do is to hit the like button. Always click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts as soon as we release the next video.